Now that Pete Davidson and uh, Kim Kardashian, they broke up quite recently, I figured Pete's definitely going to be trending. Uh, it's, Pete is actually quite an interesting example of the female gaze because when m most men look at Pete, they see a skinny man who's quite tall, big, decent frame, but skinny man with dark circles and an overly nothing exceptional, facially speaking. But yet he has been able to attract some of the most socially desirable women in Hollywood and he's worked his way up the social ladder. So the real question is, why is he so desirable to women? but men, for some reason, can't seem to understand his appeal. It's actually quite a unique blend of model-esque and plain features. Model-esque meaning quite sharp, robust features, and plain feature meaning softer, grassal features. His eye area, namely his dark circles, certainly contribute to that. Pete's face does fit into Western beauty standards, and despite people being quick to dismiss him as being ugly, his low levels of body fat translate to lean facial features, and I think that's quite important because most men aren't actually that lean to compare with, especially which shows in his jaw and cheekbone region. Facial angularity is a very important sexually mature trait for men to have and this adds to dimorphism, making men look like men basically. And in doing so, you add to the attractiveness of a handsome male face. Despite having a weak eye area, that is by no means something you'd find in the Western modeling world, Pete does have strong dentofacial growth bone structure, and so he has good facial definition. He isn't some exception to the rule. Women seem to find him attractive because he is attracted by Western standards. It's just that most people can't properly identify what attractive even is. You ask them to put it into words, they have no idea. The social aspect needs to be considered as well. Pete is, well, Pete Davidson, and so his personality and height are also attractive qualities that give him this larger than life character in Hollywood. You know, who is this guy that's we're around dating Ariana and now Kim and who's next? And so it really adds to the whole allure of this enigmatic character who just came out of nowhere in Hollywood recently. Ties me into my next point, the celebrity halo effect. You see, celebrities often tie their facial features to their TV, online, movie personalities. Since most people know Pete's comedic style and mannerisms through his stand-up comedy or his Saturday Night Live shows, his personality influences how his facial features are perceived, in a very much positive way, a halo effect. For most people actually, it is the other way around, where their perceived personality is the first impression that comes from how they actually look. So you see someone, then you make a judgement of personality. With Pete, you've probably heard his personality before you've ever seen him. It's pretty fair to say that Pete Davidson definitely plays up the junky look, and no disrespect whatsoever, that's just what he does even acknowledges it in his stand-up comedy, but the eye bags, the sunken eyes, are an indirect result of a Crohn's disease, right? So it keeps him dehydrated, that causes those effects, but if he rehydrates properly, it should go away with time. Research by Arnetal studied the effects of dark circles under the eyes and its implication in health status, and what he found was that when they measured the health status by a condition called subhealth, Subhealth can best be described as not exactly having a disease, it's not indicative that you have something going on, but it is showing that you may have something forming in the background, and dark circles themselves have often been linked to self-consciousness, depression, anxiety, sleep disturbances, so there are some negative traits to it. But what I believe is that Pete Davidson's genetic dark circles actually play to the female nurturing characteristics. So think about it like this, Pete is approaching his 30s, but he actually looks like he's in his young 20s. He's got a very boyish look, a very boyish personality. It's very fun-loving, very free-spirited. And so with Kim being an older but more powerful lady with all the stability she could ever need in her life, I mean, she's worth billions, then the thing that she's missing very much is that fun element that Pete embodies so well. From his looks, you know, he looks 20, but he could be as old as he wants. He still looks like he's fun. He still looks like a young man. And so he reminds me of a business that understands their customer really, really well. He knows exactly where he is in the market, you know, the sexual market of all the available men choices out there. And so he understands what he has to do to appeal to the women that are lacking a Pete Davidson in their life. Moving on, let's talk about his actual strongest facial feature, which is his jawline. And it's conventionally a very sharp and handsome jawline. It's why Pete again gets the title of ugly hot. And I'm not making this up. There's many TikTok videos explaining why Pete to a lot of women is ugly hot. And I'm explaining why this may be the case. A taller chin is a dimorphic trait that's known meaning it is masculine and usually attractive in men. 
Shorter chin height is shown to be a neotenous facial feature, meaning it makes you look more juvenile, childlike. Pete seems to have a very mature bone structure with defined angularity and strong dentofacial growth of the lower jaw. Pete's chin is about three times taller than his full trim, which is quite apparent when you look at it from first glance. His chin is arguably a bit more disproportionate though. So when you assess his lower third facial proportions, it does seem like the lower part of his jaw is quite strong, almost overbearing compared to the upper half of his face. The distance from his nose to his upper lip should be about one third of his lower third height, and Pete is only 26%, which is quite short. Still, a powerful chin does add to the perceived masculinity of Pete's face, despite his lower jaw or the mandible perhaps being more developed than his upper jaw or the maxilla. And an actual cephalogram or a x-ray would show that his alignment may just be perfectly fine and he just has a very strong chin. Pete is known for having that notorious skinny guy physique, but in his case, it actually adds to his facial attractiveness. Despite the lack of muscle, Pete's physique is actually very lean, so he doesn't have a skinny physique with high body fat levels. This means that he's skinny, not skinny fat, much like a model is often skinny and lean, not skinny fat. So in doing so, his jawline is much more accentuated, his cheekbones, brow ridge, a lot stronger, a lot sharper. It gives him facial robusticity, which is what makes his face look angular. And obviously angularity is tied to masculinity. He has a visible OG curve, which is the outlined hollow cheek look and that's generally attractive within reason. As I mentioned on the podcast in a specific episode, there is a degree of tattoos and coverage that makes a man look more attractive to a limit. And in Pete's case, it definitely works to his benefit because it separates him from really everyone else and it plays to his strengths. that He doesn't work a traditional nine to five. He can take more creative risk in his body. Not actively working against his stereotypes is what Pete makes attractive. So. He might look like a junkie, but he really <laughs> embraces that in the best way possible. He's not trying to look attractive or well-groomed. And if he does that, he may actually look more uncanny because he's been put into this bucket of free-spirited type for so long. On the surface, his face is still quite dimorphic with a defined jawline, but doesn't have a traditionally attractive face. In some of his SNL skits where he covers his tattoos, wears a wig, shaves, he entirely loses that indifferent and cool look about him and that's when the face starts to look uncanny. And when he doesn't have facial hair, he looks more boyish and preppy and he uses those two looks depending on who he's dating at the time. That doesn't play well into his mature and defined facial features as he gets older however, so I'm guessing he's probably gonna grow out his beard more, what he can of it. And Pete seems to have cracked the code on looking his best by alternating between these two archetypes of himself. Shorter hair, light facial hair, masculinize his face. A designer stubble is usually kept by him as a fashion statement because it looks more unkempt than being clean shaven. And so again, Pete's really playing into his character, his facial feature, his archetype that he's created for himself over these last couple of years as being the free spirited guy that women date to escape the boringness, I guess the rigidity of the typical men of Hollywood. Pete's face can best be described as unconventionally attractive. So again, the ugly hot theory is easiest way to explain in unconventionally attractive terms, but nonetheless is still quite attractive when you look at it from more objective terms, like his jawline, his, you know, his facial structure, his bone structure, he's an attractive guy. So when most people say that he's ugly hot, I think they just refer to the eye region. Before we move any further, let me talk a bit about Pete's eye region. So the eye region is a very important characteristic on a face because it's what we look at first, as in that video I've made a long time ago, the eyes can make or break a face. In this case, Pete's eye region is arguably not the best. He does have a very significant contour deformity, and it's very apparent here, where it makes the eye look almost bug-eyed, as if the lower eyelid is coming out of his face, rather than sitting nicely flush with the under eye region. You shouldn't confuse this with egg sal, which is a common popular Korean term for another similar looking facial feature, but the difference is, in Pete's case, it's much more pronounced because his lower eyelid is inflamed often because of his Crohn's disease and Pete actually calls it the butthole eyes. Those are his words, not mine. Pete's upper eyelid exposure is about normal for most humans so if he didn't have the Crohn's disease with the lower eyelid inflammation his eyes would look very aesthetically handsome and well proportioned to his face. So when most people call Pete ugly hot. Right so Noah Beck is the perfect example of hot ugly and Pete Davidson is a perfect example of ugly hot. Channing Tatum hot ugly. Anwar Hadid is ugly hot. Noah Centineo is hot ugly. Benedict Cumberbatch is ugly hot. 
Adam Driver is another great example anyway, of ugly. As opposed to somebody who's uh, ugly, someone like Zac Efron, who has very well sculpted features, almost too perfect to the point that it looks uncanny, then oftentimes I've heard from many women on TikTok especially that that becomes a turnoff. And this is the crux of the male gaze. We as men tend to think that perfection, more perfection equals better results. So you get closer and closer to a theoretical idea and in return you should expect better returns. And this is where the incel community, primarily made up of men who follow the male gaze, have gone so wrong. They have little experience with interacting with women and what women want, and so they theorize in their dark corner of the internet that all women must want a man who looks like this, because theoretically, to the male gaze, that is perfection. It is the most sexually dimorphic face, it is the most symmetrical face, it is the most average coinophilically attractive face, it has near perfect proportions as found in theoretical studies, so in theory, it must be the ideal face. But in reality, it is not the perfection of the individual features themselves, but the summation of how they work together as a whole. This is Gestalt psychology, where we interpret the world in complete units, not as individual blocks. That's not to say it's not important to have attractive features, it's still important, but having all of them won't necessarily make you the most attractive person. So what you need to appreciate is that there's this fine line of trying to look your best but not looking like you're trying too hard. And Pete Davidson has mastered the art of not trying too hard.